Okay, so I'm watching the uh, Democrat debate for you. You don't have to do it, but, I mean, you could. Um, if you've come to my channel, you know I'm not really partisan, hopefully. I think both sides are retarded, and so are these people for the vast majority. I can't, you know, don't want to overgeneralize. But if you're a Democrat, more power to you. I would be a Kennedy Democrat if those things existed anymore. But they do not. So here you've got a woman who lied about her ethnicity to get into college, and she gets to be on the stage, which is remarkable to me. Um, you don't want her. And throughout, I'm going to pause this video just because, and that creepy old guy next to her, you don't want him. As I'm watching this, they raise their hands like they're in school. They're all begging for the attention of the moderator, except for one and I think she is your only true candidate. Look at there, Bernie raising his hand, waving. Joe's got his hand up. The little Oompa Loompa girl's got her hand up. The dude at the end, um, he had his hand up. So I'm going to put pause and listen for a little bit, but we'll be back to this in just a second. Okay, so we're back. So this crazy woman right now is talking about uh, cages and cages at the border, and she's claiming that the current president caused the border crisis. Take a look at this. I know I cut it off, but it says media manipulation story about immigrant kids in cages scrubbed after UN said it happened on Obama's watch. So, so that, who knows if it's true, but it's funny as hell because you got zero hedge here with a story that the cage kids were on, <clears throat> pardon me, Obama's watch. And yet that girl or woman is saying that it was Trump's fault. So that's pretty funny. And this guy's pretty good. If you don't vote for a, uh, um, to Lucy Gabbard, you can vote for this guy. He's pretty funny. He'll be great comedy. I mean, if you look how animated he is, he's kind of got light color eyes, so you know there's some mixing in there, um, Caucasian and something else. See, people miss this opportunity and lose because we are nominating someone that doesn't isn't trusted, doesn't have authentic connection. So he's pretty funny, and he's he's a good speaker. He's mayor of some town. Who cares where? But for president, I think he'd be entertaining. So, and the woman next to him, to Lucy Gabbard, only one wearing white. Probably not a virgin, but none of my business. Joe's surprised. Look at that face. Joe's surprised face, shaking his head, condescending towards the black guy. A little smirk on his face. Corey is animated. This is fun. So, you didn't miss much. You're not missing much. Oh, Joe's got to ask for permission to speak. All these cucks on the stage are ridiculous. So, again, if you're a Democrat, please vote smart. Forget what the press is telling you. Forget the polls. You got one winner in there. It's Tulsi Gabbard. So, I'm going to listen to this because it's going to be funny. And I got to put you on pause. Now, I picture Joe Biden saying, you know, that Cory Booker, he's got some nice looking kids. They're cute. I want to smell their hair. I might even, you know, rub their shoulders a little bit. And Booker's just getting incensed. He wants to walk over there and punch that guy. Look at that body language. Look how pissed off he is. <laughs> Snarling. This is great. Joe's actually talking about decriminalizing marijuana. But when I saw the split screen, it was so funny I had to share. Okay, so MSNBC and the Washington Post didn't have one male of any color who could ask a question during this debate? That's incredible. We're going to give him some commercial time just because... But, so MSNBC is a huge organization, so is the Washington Post. They hosted this debate, and they have four women asking questions. Which, there's nothing wrong with women asking questions, but apparently there wasn't even one guy qualified enough that they have under hire to ask questions to a bunch of candidates. I think that's pretty funny. Okay, but on a serious note, while we wait for the commercial, um, none of the Democrat or Republican people running for the next presidency have acknowledged that we don't live in a democracy. Technically, it's a republic. And we send people to vote for us. This is not 51 versus 49 democracy. It's turned into that through the Administrative Procedures Act of 1946, I believe. Um, and you can look that up. That killed the republic way before we were born. So if you have any hopes that any of these people are going to make your life better, Please don't, because they're not, and they can't. The system's not set up that way. 
do your best, build your family, hold your loved ones close, help your fa- help your friends, help your family, be the best person you can be. That's the best thing you can do for your party. Given a socialist millionaire who's never had a job, your vote is ridiculous. You may like Bernie Sanders, but he's he's, he's not going to help your life. Technically, none of these people are going to help your life. The only one that might would be Gabbard because she's probably not going to go to war. So kids and people you know are not going to have to go die. That's the only reason I'm in favor of her. The rest of them, nah. Anyway, okay, we'll see if there's any more comedy in here. And if not, we'll just wrap this up. Okay, so back to recap. When you look at this debate, I want to show you these moderators for real. I made a mistake earlier. The one on the far left may be a man. But other than that, I don't I'm shocked they don't have at least one XY chromosome up there asking questions. So and I gotta quit using gender. That's not even a real thing. <laughs> so this woman I think she's sincere, I think she's nice. I think she's she's what she is. But she's like five foot four. And you can't have a five foot four president. And Merkel's five six, and she's screwing up Germany. So let's not go down that road. Is that a guy? I'm not sure. Looks like a guy. Sounds like a woman. Doesn't look too much like a woman. I don't know what that is. Um, I was trying to get Cory Booker raising his hand, but I didn't pause it right. So this is what you get. And that thing, that oh my gosh. This is like my third grade school teacher who made me practice cursive until my hands cramped. I have great penmanship now, but as a 10-year-old kid, I didn't like my hand cramping. I don't think she's going to be any good. Does anybody have a crazy uncle that on holidays tells you stories about stuff and you know it's complete bullshit? Just untrue things that he talks about he did? Does it, if you don't, you do now. It's Uncle Bernie. Here we go. He's funny. I'm going to listen. And if they take this video down, I don't care. American communities that prevented us from having a Governor Stacey Abrams right now. Yes. And that is when you have undemocratic means, when you suppress people's votes to get elected, those are the very people you're going to come after when, you, when you're in office. And this bill, opposed by over 70%, the heartbeat bill here, opposed by over 70% rules. of Georgians, is right. the result from voter suppression. This gets back to the issue about making sure we are fighting every Every single day that whoever is a nominee, they can overcome the attempts to suppress the votes, particularly of low income and minority voters, and particularly in the black community Senator, like we saw here in Georgia. Senator Booker, thank you. And to that point, individual states, as you all know, set their own rules for voting and for elections. Depending on where you live, you may be required to show ID. Tenth or Amendment. Not. Okay, you might I have a lot of days for I'm early sorry. voting or. I couldn't. She kills me. They don't know the Constitution at all whatsoever, even though it's moot because I told you about the Administrative Procedures Act of 1946. Why I keep harping on the Constitution is a character defect on my part, I suppose. But Democrats, you can't vote for this guy. He is, look at that. You can't. He failed at his state election. He won his mayoral election by like 11 points or 11,000 or some stuff like that. Look at him. He's little. And he's he's not a man who can take a punch. If you're going to hire a president, make sure he can take a punch. That old Trumpster, you hit him in the belly, he'll be fine. Trust me. He could probably even take one on the jaw. So of the bills that are in that House pass bill you just referred to. Um, And I think this kind of experience matters. I have been devoted to this from the time that I've got to the Senate. And I think having that experience, knowing how you can get things done, leading the bills to take the social media companies to task, a bipartisan bill to say... They were talking about abolishing the Electoral College because you should just give the votes to the popular candidate. Well, the Constitution doesn't work that way. And until we officially declare it dead, that's what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> I hope if we get a I'm going to pause it. I'm not going to say another thing because this video is getting way too long. But if Gabbard comes up, if they give her a question, they've given her three out of the whole almost two hours now. If she gets a question, we're going to listen to it its entirety because that's your candidate, uh, Democrats. 
If you don't vote for Gabbard, your guys are retarded as the people on the stage. Just saying. Voting rights, please. I mean, voting rights are essential for our democracy. Securing our elections is essential for our democracy. I've introduced legislation called the Securing America's Elections Act that mandates paper ballots to make sure that every single voter's voice is heard. But I want to get back to Pete Buttigieg and his comment about experience. Uh, I, Pete, you'll agree that uh, the service that we both have provided to our country as veterans by itself does not qualify us to serve as commanders. Commander in chief, I think the most recent example of your inexperience in national security and foreign policy came from your recent careless statement about how you, as president, be willing to send our troops to Mexico to fight the cartels. As commander in chief, leader of our armed forces, I bring extensive experience serving for seven years in Congress on the Foreign Affairs Committee, on the Armed Services Committee, on the Homeland Security Committee, meeting with leaders of, of uh, countries around the world, working with military commanders of different commands, Congresswoman, uh, thank you. dealing with high-level national security briefings, understanding what's necessary, the preparation that I've gotten to walk in on day one to serve as Commander-in-Chief. Congresswoman, thank so you. I've Mr. Mayor, I'll allow to you to that. respond. I know that it's par for the course in Washington to take remarks mm -hmm. out of context, but that is outlandish even by the standards of today's politics. Are, are you saying that you didn't say that? I was talking about U.S.-Mexico cooperation. We've been doing... Oh, and I think he's a sodomite, so you can't vote for him. God will be pissed at you. It says it in the Bible. Directly, whether you would send our troops to Mexico to fight cartels, and your answer was yes. The fact checkers can check this out. No. But your point about judgment is absolutely correct. Our commander in chief does need to have good judgment. And what you've just pointed out is that you would lack the courage to meet with both adversaries and friends to ensure the peace and national security of our nation. I take the example of those leaders who have come before us, leaders like JFK, who met with Khrushchev, like Roosevelt, who met with Stalin, like, Donald like Trump Reagan, who met... Like Reagan, who met and worked with Gorbachev, these issues of national security are incredibly important. I will meet with and do what is necessary oh, to make off. sure that, that face. no more of our brothers and sisters in uniform breathe. are needlessly sent into harm's way, check. fighting regime change wars that Owned undermine by a woman. our national security. Because I'll bring real leadership right. and experience to the White House. Oh, you have Senator point. The American people understand that okay, the political I can't, system I can't, I stop. we have today is corrupt. I gotta stop. And it is if I made a drinking game and posted this in its entirety, where if Bernie said billionaires or Warren said billionaires or they said top 1%, you guys would be loaded right now. And we're only, I'm only 13 minutes into this. It's been going for a couple hours. But, oh my goodness. And this guy, this guy's interesting. He, uh, spend his own money to try to stop climate change hundreds of millions of dollars for nothing because we know it's not real but I, I don't think maybe we could listen a little bit of America the Democratic Party keeps talking about trying to persuade a few people who are Republicans to like us when up to half the people don't vote at all because they think neither party tells the truth half the people are no smart one deals with my issues the system is broken why would we vote but what we've found at Next Gen America is that is the start of a conversation about why votes are so important. And if you look at 2018 and flipping the House, Next what America. really happened was Democrats, Democratic voting went up by three quarters. In the 38 congressional districts where Next Gen America was turning out young people, Next the Gen turnout America. went up by more than 100 percent, more you, than Mr. double. Sir. So for us to win, for everybody on this stage, this for whoever right is here. the candidate to have a Senate that's Democratic, for us to have the sweeping victory that we Mr. absolutely Steyer, are you. going to have next year, it's a turnout question. We're going to have to tell the truth, Sir. and we're going to have to organize across this country. Thank you very much. It is time at this point. It is well past time. And if you don't want them to win, then you have to turn out. I personally don't care. I don't vote. I haven't voted since Clinton betrayed the country. And I first started to learn how politics worked um, 
Booker, oh, we got to listen to Booker. I don't care if this gets taken down. I had a closing statement prepared, but I saw in the audience during the break uh, a man named John Lewis. And perhaps it's interesting and important for me to mention why I'm so grateful to him. I've been calling in this whole election for our need to fight and fight the right way by bringing people together to create transformative change, not just beat Donald Trump. That's the floor. We need to go to the ceiling. We need to. OK, so we can't listen to him anymore. But watch this fake smile. He fake smiles all the time while he talks. That's hilarious. We're going to pause this till Gabbard gets to talk. My personal commitment to you, to all of my fellow Americans, is to treat you with respect and compassion something that we in Hawaii call aloha. Every single person deserves to be treated with respect, regardless of race, uh, religion, or gender, or even your politics. Inclusion, unity, respect, aloha, these will be the operating principles for my administration. Aloha. Now, Dr. Martin Luther King visited Hawaii first back in 1959, where he expressed his appreciation for what we call the aloha spirit. He said, we look to you for inspiration as a bold example for what you have already succeeded in the areas of racial harmony and racial justice where we are still struggling to achieve in other sections of the country. He later went on to say, as I looked out at the various faces in various colors mingled together like the waters of the sea, I see only one face the face of the future. Working side by side, let's defeat the divisiveness of Donald Trump. Come together and usher in a 21st century of racial harmony, of racial justice, peace, inclusion, and true equality. Working side by side, let's make Dr. King's dream our reality. Thank you, Congresswoman. Mr. Yang, your turn. I'm here with Okay, so she's pretty, she's a good speaker, smart, kind of good looking. Um, if you're a Democrat and you're going to vote, you better vote for her or you're going to lose. Because she'll probably put the screws to Trump. He's a sucker for a pretty face. And his brain gets all discombobulated. He married a tranny thinking it was a woman. I mean, come on. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I know this got long. And I'm. if you got to the end, I thank you so much. Either you're bored or I was entertaining. I don't know. But YouTube's not probably not going to keep me here very long. I'm going to post this and most the rest of my videos up on brighteon.com. Natural News sponsored it, Mike Adams. Go check it out. All right. Take good care.